Hey guys, welcome back to Gary Morgan Art, and today I'm going to tell you about my thought process when it comes to designing characters, and I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how you can improve your personal character pieces. Okay, so this is the um, character, like almost a final character design. I will go with, like further in this into the rendering. So I start off with establishing like a shadow side for this arm. And in this case, everything that's in shade will be on the left hand side of the character. So for instance, now when I've started rendering in the breasts and the arm and like the clavicle area, I'm making sure to take the shadow color off the face that I've pre-established in part one of this character design that's on the YouTube channel. I'm just placing areas of shadow on the left hand side of everything. So if you take into consideration that you have to imagine these forms are like the primitive forms so like spheres cylinders cones cubes and then when you have to de define which side the light will be on after learning to render these types of forms you will understand how to do this on a character design no problem it's the only thing after that is where you have to learn is like texturizing for different materials and so like metal leather hair liquid so like it's, there's a different learning curve after you've had to learn how to do skin and paint in forms so you can do a black and white value study of a cube and you can understand how to how to light a cube and a cylinder and a sphere and a cone however taking that to make it look more realistic is where some people struggle so i'm just going to jump back to what i'm doing screen right now so i'm currently just like painted in some of the metal areas for the neck so you can see that she's kind of wearing like a necklace and i'm trying to make sure that the metal has a lot of reflection and deep shadows because metal which i will in future drag the levels down a little bit on just the metal as you'll find that your values sometimes don't match quite how much dark value there is in silver and and metals etc depending on how brushed it is so that you'll learn how to do stuff like this just by doing lots of practice and studies of a particular type of material so for instance you just saw i was doing the fabric there i used a soft brush and then i made sure to treat the fabric of the skirtish thing that she's got wearing as if it was a cylinder but i used the soft brush to make it look more refined like silk however if you were going to do something different like a, a cotton or a more like muslin like type of texture you wouldn't use a soft brush and as you can see now i'm kind of doing the leather of the boot that she's wearing and personally this is one of the one of the things i struggle with is leather i it's easy to do brown leather but in this case it's green so i was struggling to try and find the right light to dark ratio using my shadow maps to make it look like leather i think i did achieve it in the end but what you got to take into consideration is that you should do a lot of studies of the material you're trying to paint and look at a lot of reference of artists work that have leather in it so like say you you like a particular character designer on the internet and they do leather pay close attention to how they place their lights and shadows to achieve a simplified version of a realistic material that's where i've been trying to improve myself recently is just as little brush strokes as possible to achieve a look a first read from zoomed out because realistically your character is probably only going to be about this small on a screen to somebody else they and they're not gonna they're not gonna know that if they zoom in there's gonna be like no detail it doesn't have to look exactly picture perfect as long as when you're zoomed out it looks like a pair of leather trousers or a leather boot nobody's going to know anyway so what I've been trying to do in my own practice is just try and get used to simplifying everything and making sure that my brushwork leads towards the um, planes that are turning. So say for a cylinder, I try to make sure my brush strokes go, go vertical and then for like the planes of the face, like the cheek, it'll go on a diagonal, the cylinder of the nose that'd be like a, another vertical the forehead could be either a vertical or a horizontal brush stroke 
and I try to make sure that I'm having a good variety of big, medium, small brush strokes in everything that I'm doing. And I, I think the rendering process is... I think that's the more personal taste that you have that you don't even realize you have. I think the rendering is where your air quotation marks style comes in because there's a bunch of fundamentals that everybody has to learn and everybody has to know to be able to paint and render forms regardless of your particular area of expertise to so say you're into realism, stylized or more cartoonish. You still need to know these basics and where and how much you choose to render your piece is where your style really comes through, I think. So here you can see I'm kind of just adding in some dark and light side to cylinders for the metal. So you can see on the top tube here for this piece. So like there's a almost like a lid to this bottle, kind of like a decanter or something. And I've just put a highlight side and a shadow side as when you look at cylinders or anything that's like spherical in space it has a, a highlight side and a shadow side and i've tried to incorporate that so it looks like it's rounded in space um i've just erased the bottle and i've left some white there to make it look like it's shiny and it's glass and i've left the blue liquid i've some erased some of the blue liquid so that i can make it look like it's falling or leaning to one side depending on how she stood for here i tend to just stick to the like a simple method of adding in a core shadow just like you would for anything and then a highlight side so in this case like i said the, the light is coming from the top right so the shadows should be on like the back left it, it, so if you imagine the forms are turning on the hair almost like a piece of ribbon and then you put your shadow where the light wouldn't hit and you put your light where the shadow wouldn't hit in the turning of the ribbon and then you kind of just use one brush stroke to do the shadow and then you take a highlight color and you brush into that shadow color and it'll kind of give you a nice transition gradient that kind of looks like a ripple. And that's kind of what I do for here. Um, you can later on go into, into it a bit more detailed. But like you can use a blending brush and work into it afterwards with a finer brush to give it like more hair strands if you'd like to do that to break the silhouette up, which is also very good because you want to, as soon as you look at this character, say it was just completely black and you there was no line work no details no nothing it's just a silhouette you'd be able to read it immediately you'll know exactly what character it is so like you'll notice with characters like bowser mario link sonic they all have very distinct silhouettes and you when you're painting your characters that's the first read and then the minor minor details like see shape designs on the inside of your character that is your second read and then the minor details on sin on the inside of that design is your third read and when i'm painting i try to add as much interest of big medium small shapes to the overall silhouette then i go inwards and i add a big medium small variety of shapes so in this case i've tried to keep the motif of like this floral gem type of motif running throughout so you can see that she's got a headdress that's kind of like a flower but it's got a gem on it necklace the same thing the bottle's got the same thing and on the boots the skirt thing the belt everything is kind of repeated but you got to make sure that you have a good placement of these details so in this character here like i've got details on the leg but then the skirt is kind of a rest period and then on the bottom of the the skirt area I have more detail and it's the same throughout the piece so like the belt there's detail on the bottom but then it's blank because it's just a belt and then there's the buckle there's more detailed and then there's rest and it, and you keep that big medium small rest and detail throughout the piece typically I would go further into these this is just like a, a quick rundown of my thought process of character design so that I I'd spend another probably a couple of days on this just trying to get the design to look right the rendering to look nice but you can kind of get a rough idea of what i've done here like i've just messed with the eyes because i was wasn't liking them she kind of looked a bit cockeyed so this is just like you're problem solving as you go the entirety of the way through the, the painting and you should just try and have fun with it find as much reference as you can and really enjoy just painting all right guys i really appreciate your time thanks for watching this video if you enjoyed it, please leave a like. If you want to see more future content, please subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified when I post future content.